So today's cardinal lesson, we're talking about a subject I've avoided through my other 150 videos that uh, some of you have painfully gone through. And the subject is me, Hans Scheil, the, the biography of Hans Scheil. And so I'm going to try to go through this for those of you that are interested. I've purposely left this out of the other videos because I'm just thinking a million of you have not tuned in in the last year to hear about my history. You've come here for learning from financial information. So these core values are at the root that were really instilled in me by my family. And, you know, this is the family that I originated from. Um, you know, my mother and my father, my father was a German immigrant and uh, he came in 1949 and uh, he thought it was going to be easier and uh, he had to take physical labor and so uh, on to make a living. And so he joined the U.S. Army and uh, they shipped him because he spoke several languages and had a little medical training. They shipped him overseas and uh, there in the, in the U.S. Army running the, as a paramedic, he met my mother who is the, the uh, she's a Navy nurse. And um, that was her way to get out of North Dakota uh, in the 1940s. And the two of them met and uh, were married overseas. And then they settled back in, in actually in Minnesota, which is close to where my mom was from. And the only job my father could get was door-to-door -door sales. I mean, that's just the only thing Germans were being hired for. And uh, so he chose insurance and selling health insurance door-to-door. -door. And then he, because of embracing these values and just, he was like Mr. Personal Responsibility. He was very successful. And then a little secret, he went out to some of the German communities in Western Minnesota and uh, he gave his whole sales pitch in German. And he used to give out referral gifts that his brother was shipping him from back overseas. And so anyhow, he was quite the operator, very successful. And um, I got into the insurance business at 18. And so in the rest of my family, uh, my mother, like I said, was a nurse and she was a career nurse and a working professional. My sister Kathy was an executive. My sister Margo was a nurse practitioner uh, she passed away in 2011. My sister Audrey was a business executive and later came in the insurance business. And my younger brother, Jim, who's in that picture, um, he still works with me today at Cardinal uh, here. And so you can talk to him on the phone if you'd like. And he, he's the president of our company. So, you know, it was from this family upbringing and from my father's just immigrant mentality and his hard work that, you know, I had to have a job when I was in college and what better way to get into business than selling insurance door to door, just like him in 1976. So that was the year that I graduated from high school. Um, I got my insurance license and I sold my first insurance policy and the Medicare part B deductible in 1976, when I was selling Medicare supplements was $60. Uh, the prime interest rate was seven and a quarter percent. And the top individual tax rate was 70%. You know, it's now 39.6%. So just kind of interesting getting into that. And I sold insurance part-time through college. Um, 1980 was the year I graduated from college and the year I moved to North Carolina. And so, um, and I moved here and this was my father's wisdom. He said, if we send you as the manager of an office that there are already people in for your whole career, people are going to say, well, his dad fixed him up with something. So he had this brilliant idea. He said, well, and furthermore, if we gave you this office, all the people are going to be older than you and none of them are going to respect you. So his brilliant idea was we're going to send you to North Carolina where the company had never been. There were no agents, no customers, no office, no nothing. And you're going to start from scratch, son. And so go forth. And so I moved to North Carolina in 1980 and started working out of a hotel room in Winston-Salem. And 
began recruiting people and selling insurance with them. And then we're going to jump ahead to 1985. And that was the year a lot of things happened. Number one, I got married to my sweet Southern belle, Rhonda. And uh, she's here in this picture. And I was also the manager of the year or the most successful manager in the whole company with the organization I developed here in North Carolina. And there's a picture of all of them. And um, just very interesting in a bit of history. Uh, I also, in 1985, um, just started my career in started working on my CLU and my CHFC, which are professional designations that I earned. And I earned both of those in 1990. So, and I've always had a desire, even though we were door to door insurance salespeople, and it had progressed a bit through the years, but I always had a desire instilled in me from my father to dress sharp, be sharp, be an executive, um, and to study and be at a level where I'm more professional than the average person uh, working in the insurance business. And that all ties back to this personal responsibility. And, you know, in, in the interest of open and honest communication, I want to tell you, as I'm going over the highlights of my career, and there are many, but I don't want this to be like a, you know, one of those Christmas letters you get from your second cousin that everything's wonderful. Um, you know, there's plenty of failures and mistakes throughout this whole career and 46 year career in the insurance business. And I'm obviously going over the good things, but I learned a lot more failing than I ever did uh, winning and succeeding. And I've have had some great success. So, so in 1990, I got that, uh, Professional, but those professional designations. In 1992, I changed companies and went to work for a much larger company. Um, then in 1997, I um, achieved my securities license. So that was the first time I was licensed to sell somebody stocks and bonds and uh, make investments for people, give advice on investments. And what I'll tell you is just getting the license to do that is a very low level of training. I, I really wouldn't want to put my money with somebody that just passed the exam last week. Um, and it was through the professional training through the CLU and the CHFC that really prepared me and the experience of talking to people for years that prepared me to, you know, to do this. In the year 2000, I was the number one manager in the new company. So I started over in 1992 just had three agents in my office in Charlotte, started working and applying all these values, teaching them to a team. And by the year 2000, as you can see in the picture there, Rhonda and I were getting the roses and the, the crystal and all that stuff that goes along with that. I was the number one manager in that company. So then along 2005, another highlight of my career as I was appointed the senior vice president and head of sales nationally for this insurance company that I'd worked with for since 1992. And that was pretty exciting. It was probably the biggest mistake of my life because I was like a fish out of water in the home office working with all these executives. I really belonged out there with the salespeople, teaching the salespeople, but that's exactly why they wanted to hire me in the job. Anyhow, that was a highlight of my career. Uh, 2007, through their graciousness, um, I was able to achieve my master's degree in business and they paid for it because I was now this corporate executive and I needed the same education that all my peers had. Um, so that was another highlight. I got my master's degree and only one of my other siblings did that. So anyhow, 2010 is the year that I opened Cardinal Advisors, okay? And again, starting over, I mean, initially, I rented an office with 25 spots and I had no employees, had no customers, a um, lot of experience, and I opened it right across the street from my business that I had run for years and just started recruiting people. And here we are 12 years later 
And the reason I did that is these values is I spent my whole career waiting for somebody upstream to tell me and to make all the decisions in the business. And, it, it, you know, when I'm doing that, I mean, you, you always, as a sales guy in the field or the sales manager, you think you know better. And so I'm relying on the executives. And for a while, I was one of those executives. But, you know, the reason I wanted to open my own business is I was in conflict with these values many times in the way we were going about our business, fundamentally just representing one company at a time, which is really my past. That was my dad's past. That was, you know, my second journey at a company. And I had been very successful within that system. But I just don't think in the modern world that was the way to go, where I come out and call on you, or now we're working over the phone and Zoom and that kind of thing. And I've only got one thing to offer you. Um, now we represent about 150 different insurance companies and I'm able to keep these people at bay and I can decide which one of them have made a set of decisions that makes their situation right for this particular customer. And so that was really the, the premise that I set up the business on. And that's, you know, it's, it's again tied to these values is, is this, this one of open and honest communication. I mean, historically, most sales techniques and sales training that I've had and even taught has been, in my opinion, very manipulative when I can look back. I mean, I didn't think upon that as a way, but it was designed, you know, I've got a product here. I've got an insurance policy that you need and I'm going to sell it to you. Okay. And I'm going to, get you to raise objections, which you're naturally going to do is you're going to be saying, wait a minute. And then I'm going to answer those objections. And I'm trying to manipulate your train of thought into signing this piece of paper and buying the insurance policy. And I guess you could say all sales is manipulative, but I don't, I don't really think that it has to, I think you can stay in these values and be a very effective salesperson. And it starts with open and honest communication. So I'm going to, tell people the good and the bad about everything that I sell. And I'm in a bit of a good situation now because I've got 150 th different things to offer them. And I'm able to evaluate. I don't tell people about all those options, but I'm going to be able to pick the one that's just right for them. And then I will offer it to them. And I can be completely honest. And even the best choice has a lot of downside and that, that needs to be communicated. And then this whole business of the golden rule is I've always worked like I want to treat people like I would want my parents treated or now I'm becoming my parents. I'm almost 65 and I want to, I want my whole organization to treat people like they're talking to their mother. And that really, these are all things that my father instilled to me um, very effectively. And it's to the extent that I've had success, in my career, I, you know, I'm going to attribute it to this. Now, 2016, so, um, you know, you'd think I'd have my own story memorized. But in 2016, I wrote my first book. Well, I actually started writing it in about 2012. And it took me several years. And it's really about my philosophy and the seven worries, you know, which are Medicare, Social Security, uh, long-term care, IRAs, 401ks, uh, retirement income and investments, estate planning, and income tax. And those are, they're kind of my deal of the order that I put them in, the importance I shed on them, and the real value that we and I bring at Cardinal to the table is the mixing of all seven of those things um, because it's pretty easy to make decisions in isolation about each one of the seven. It's when you mix them all together in a person's retirement and they're like soup and one affects the other. We're pretty good at that. And that's what I wrote the book about. And the book is mostly a book of stories and it's a little bit dated now. I haven't written a second edition because YouTube has been so successful. And then moving along to 2022, 
what I wanted to share with everyone is this is the year we hit in a year's time, a million YouTube viewers. So, which is pretty darn cool, especially that we haven't paid one red cent into YouTube to have them play our videos for all of you. In fact, they're now paying me, which is very flattering. And I'm very thankful for this. I just, I think at the, you know, you could say the tail end of the career, but I hope the end is a long time because I, I don't plan on going anywhere. Um, they're played all over the world and, you know, in all 50 states in the District of Columbia. I'm licensed in all those places. We have customers in all those places. And we don't have to call anybody anymore. And for that, I'm very thankful. Um, we just have a steady stream of people calling us. And, um, you know, my team here at Cardinal, um, now, as you can look at, it's much smaller. I'm very proud of these people. Um, they're all in line with this. And I use these values, or we use these values, in picking our customers. I mean, we're looking for people who embrace this stuff. And we're really going to expect them to embrace it, as we want our customers to be all about personal responsibility. We want them to be open and honest with us. Uh, we want them to have the courage. I mean, it takes courage to call some guy off of YouTube and talk to him about your money. Um, you know, that's a personal growth issue. So, and, and you can rest assured, we're going to treat you like we would like to be treated. And we expect you to treat us like you would want to be treated. I mean, that's the golden rule. And we're looking for people and we've found a lot of them off of YouTube. So I'm Hans Scheil and I thank you very much for listening to this.